Hello student, welcome to the lecture number 13 of halogen derivatives. In last lecture we have seen what is S1 reaction, what is the mechanism of S1 reaction. We have studied S1 reaction at great depth. Now uh, today uh, moving further we, all, we will first see well, uh, on, uh, what is the energy profile diagram for SN1 mechanism. Okay, if you remember uh, what is the energy profile diagram of SN2? We have done that. Now, first, let's see what is the energy profile diagram for SN1 mechanism. We draw a graph of potential energy versus reaction coordination. Reaction coordination or we say reaction coordinate okay on the x-axis there's a reaction coordination and potential energy on y-axis okay now student uh, if you remember in SN1 mechanism it is a two-step reaction okay in first step there's a formation of carbocation right but when there's a uh, carbocation forms uh, 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 then it becomes a bit stable okay energy of a reactant slowly slowly increases okay and then it decreases slightly because uh, this tertiary beta carbocation is found to be positive and then it further increases and then finally we get a product we understand how it happens Suppose this is energy of reactant as the reaction proceed further initially Energy of a reactant increases Okay, it reaches to the maximum Come back slightly Right again it further increases And then decreases to give us product Here this is reactant This one is product. This is transition state one. This is transition state two. Okay. Here there's a formation of carbocation. Right. Here there's a formation of what? Carbocation. And here it gives a product. Now if you remember, uh, this is the energy of your reactant energy of a reactant and transition state this difference in the energy is what delta e but here i like delta e1 because i get two transition state this is the second transition state okay so this will be delta e2 difference in the energy of a reactant and transition state okay and this is the energy of a product and you remember what is it, this difference called this is called delta h the most important it consists of true transition state because first transition state is a carbocation and then further increases and finally get the product that's why true transition state so this is the energy profile diagram okay now student uh, one thing more on factors affecting SN1 mechanism. Okay, we have uh, we have already seen for SN2. What are the factors which affect them? Okay, now for uh, S1, first is obviously substrate. Okay, how should the substrate be which should favor SN1 mechanism? If you remember for SN2 mechanism, the substrate should be like which, which, which have less crowding or the compound which is less bulkier. Because if it is less bulkier, the nucleophile can easily go back and attack. 
but for SN1 mechanism, we require bulkier group, the one which is more crowded, the one which is more bulky. So substrate should be what? I can write the substrate should be bulky or I can write crowded. Okay, if, uh, if I talk about the example, uh, if I have suppose CH3Cl and I have CH3, 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 CL. Tell me which will favor SN1, which will favor SN2. Obviously, this is going to favor SN2 mechanism. This is going to favor SN1 mechanism. So the one which is more bulky or crowded is going to favor SN1 mechanism. Right? Clear, student? Uh, next factor. Uh, which affect SN1 mechanism or uh, the factors which can affect is what? Nucleophilicity. Nucleophilicity. If you remember, I'm talking first, I'm talking about SN2. The one which is a strong nucleophile, you remember? It's hard nucleophile, moderate nucleophile, soft nucleophile. The one which is hard nucleophile, that increases the rate of reaction faster. That increases the rate of reaction. But here, actually, nucleophile has no effect, has no very important one student. It has no effect on the rate of reaction. Nucleophile has no effect. Why? Because you remember it is a two step reaction. Once the tertiary butyl carbocation is formed, in second step, what happens? In second step, the nucleophile go and attack. Okay, so nucleophile actually play no role in the kinetics of a reaction. Because here the rate of reaction only depends upon carbocations, tertiary butyl carbocation. So nucleophile has no effect. Where? In SN1 mechanism. But if it is SN2 mechanism or SN2 reaction, obviously this nucleophile has effect okay for sn1 no effect and for sn2 it has an effect hard nucleophile uh, will increase the rate of reaction third is solvent uh if you remember student see here this is CBR, right? This is polar in nature. Water is also polar. Because of water, the bond between carbon and bromine breaks, right? And as a result, there's a formation of carbocation. Remember? Okay. So that's very important here. Solvent plays a major role or a very important role. Okay. How should be solvent? Solvent should be polar. If a solvent is polar, then in that case the dissociation takes place easily carbocation is easily formed right and that's why if i talk about solvent in sn1 mechanism it should be polar but when i talk about the solvent in sn2 mechanism it should be non-polar right okay so these are the certain factors which affect the rate of reaction but that's right okay now <clears throat> So here, actually, we complete uh, SN1 and SN2, okay. Now, student, uh, we'll start with the reaction of haloarenes. Alkyl group is completed. Now we start with the arenes, right? So we start with a reaction of hello arenes. Reaction of hello arenes. This is not a very big topic. Maybe today only we can complete this. Okay. Now. Uh, 
in that the first reaction will be uh, if you remember we have studied already Wood's reaction where alkyl had treated with sodium metal in the presence of dry ether it form higher alkane remember this is what we have done already okay uh, and I think you have done this in uh, 11th standard also okay but here we are studying is not a only words reaction but this is called what's fitting reaction what this reaction is called this reaction is called work fitted reaction what is the difference in words reaction we take alkaloid but here we take aryl halide okay example is like this this is benzene suppose br is here right and this we also this is what aryl halide we also take alkyl halide such as suppose i take ch3 br and i treat this with what sodium metal in presence of dry ether okay what will happen understand 1na will combine with br this br so it will become nabr again 1na combined with this br so it will formation 2nabr 2nabr but when this br moves out the ch3 comes in right when this br moves out the ch3 comes in and the compound we get is ch3 with the benzene ring you know the name of this it has one special name that is called toluene what is this called toluene so this is what we call words fitting reaction why this words fitting reaction because this when we take aryl it it is given by fitting but when we take alkyl it is given a words that's because it is combination of both that's what is called as words fitting reaction okay now talking about fitted reaction Fitic reaction. <clears throat> Obviously, we are going to take a benzene and aryl halide. So it is chlorobenzene. But it is treated with sodium metal in the presence of dry ether. But student, we take two mole of this. Okay. So one Na will take one Cl, another Na we again is going to take another Cl because we have two and this two is going to combine, uh, I try it like this, this is one benzene, this is another because I have two moles of benzene right, this will combine and it, it is what this product is called, this is called biphenyl right plus 2Na2Cl will give me 2NaCl. What is this reaction called? This reaction is called what? Fitted reaction. This is fitted reaction. This one is what's fitted reaction. Okay. Uh, next one is nucleophilic substitution, SN. Nucleophilic substitution of halo Arenes, right? We have to, we have talked about alkali, but now with the haloarenes. Okay, now student, one thing very important. We have to understand the uh, one mechanism. Suppose I have chlorine over here. Okay, understand this is a very important student. When I say aryl, al suppose I take alkyl halide. Okay, when I say alkyl halide, R X. Here also there is a carbon bond with chlorine here also there is a uh, if I take suppose CH3 then the carbon bond between halogen right but this bond is weaker this bond is stronger why it is like that because because of resonance this bond is not only a single bond but it is more than one it is less than two but it is more than one how it happened that is what you have to understand okay so let's see. Chlorobenzene have three lone pair of electrons. 
suppose this lone pair of electron falls over here so this bond break and we electron comes over here so what will be the resonating structure resonating structure will be somewhat like this it will have cl like this because because clone is given this electron so it will acquire positive charge right here it will become negative charge because this bonds break up it remains like this okay now what will be the next structure always remember student wherever there is a negative charge try to bring positive to uh, to next to the negative charge okay so how here how is possible to bring a positive charge over here what i'm going to do i'm going to put this electron onto this carbon right so if i draw it like this what will happen it will remain same cl positive right if this comes over here okay so this is going to be positive right this is going to be negative right can you understand that this becomes positive this become negative and this positive and negative is going to form a double bond so the bond this will go off i hope you're getting so when this electron comes here this will become positive this will become negative negative will give the electron it will form double bond right but negative charge come over here double bond like this moving further next structure uh again negative i want to become make here positive the bond will break this is going to come over here this of course negative charge here there's a double bond here's a double bond here double bond with chlorine positive charge right now negative and positive same story it will uh, uh i want to make a positive over here so this bond is going to break and ultimately i get a single bond double bond double bond double bond right what is the bottom line bottom line is that we acquire negative charge at which position ortho position para position again ortho position so whenever there's a aryl halide is present okay then the halogen put their electron through resonance right and then with the electron which comes get distributed throughout the ring and is mainly present at which position ortho and para position understand student it is not present at meta position got that understood this this is very important always remember when we are doing this reaction we have to remember this in a ring ortho para position has more electron density right okay once we understood and we should also understand that this bond is comparatively weaker this is stronger why like this because it is one single bond it is uh, has uh, more than a single bond here the carbon is sp3 hybridized here the carbon is sp2 hybridized remember because the carbon is sp2 hybridized it has more electron negativity and as the reason it can pull the electron from halogen but you may also think of so because halogen is present it will take the electron by inductive effect obviously it is going to take the electron by inductive effect okay but we all know uh, as a rules of precedency right uh, uh, whenever uh, there is resonance right it will ha always have higher effect in comparison to uh, inductive effect okay understood this right now Now, moving to the next reaction, uh, let's see the reaction. This is nucleophilic substitution reaction. Suppose I have chlorine here and I add some strong uh, electron withdrawing group. Okay. If there is a strong electron withdrawing group, okay, 
then the reaction can take place easily. Why it is like that? I make you understand. Okay. We perform this reaction in the presence of NaOH at a temperature of 433 Kelvin. Remember the temperature, that's very important. This is the first step and second step we hydrolyze this with water or I can write hydronium ion H3O plus. Right. Now, what happened? Product is simple, student. What product is formed is OH and it will remain same. This is called para nitrophenol. Okay, now uh, we have to understand certain things very important. See, in NaOH, obviously it is going to prepare Na plus and OH minus. This OH minus is go. Uh, how this OH minus is going to attack? Is it possible by SN2 mechanism or it is possible by SN1 mechanism? I mean, how it is possible? Uh, we easily understand Na and OH will break to form OH minus, and so this OH minus will come over here and the chlorine will go out. But that is not so simple, string. Right? Obviously, there's a, uh, I can say, if there's a bonding orbital, there must be an anti bonding orbital. OH minus can come to the anti bonding orbital. Is it possible? Then the mechanism will be SN2. But no, this is not going to happen. Why it is not going to be happen? The reason is that. Uh, this OH minus antibonding is surrounded by these electrons, uh, uh, the electron which is moving in the ring. If you remember the diagram, if carbon is present, right, it, uh, uh, there's two lobes, upper lobe and below lobe, right? Electrons are present in both the lobe. And these antibonding orbital is between this, so this OH minus can't come and attract. So SN2 mechanism not possible and neither SN1 mechanism possible because it is not possible that Cl moves out and there is a formation of plus charge carbocation because this plus charge is not going to make it stable. Right? So how it happens? Such reaction is not simple, not easy. That's the reason we uh, take such a temperature, this high temperature and we also take NO2 because this strong electron withdrawal group, what does it do? Understand student. We want some positive, see, carbon is present, chlorine is present. Obviously, chlorine is going to uh, take some electron by the uh, virtue of inductive effect. So, it will slightly have positive charge. But when this nitro group takes the electron, right, it is pulling the electron. So, when it is pulling the electron, we understood that here it is a negative charge, here it is a negative charge and here also negative charge. So, this will become somewhat positive and if it becomes somewhat positive, this OH- minus can attack here by putting some electron and then this chlorine can move out. So, this is whole uh, of mechanism, right? Understood that, student? Okay, now, uh, but suppose I put some electron withdrawing group at ortho position also, right? Suppose I put here y NO21 and here NO21 and I have chlorine. Then in that case, the reaction will take place much easier. Okay. Now, if I don't have that strong nucleophile, suppose I take aqueous Na2CO3. This is not so strong nucleophile. I can reduce the temperature also. That is 403 Kelvin in first step. Second, obviously, I have to hydrolyze H3O. Okay, in this case also, the reaction will happen. Why it will happen? Because I have two nitro group. Got that, student? I have two nitro group. Okay. Clear? I take sodium carbonate, which is going to dissociate and, and it is going to produce what? NaOH only. Okay. Right. So, what will the product? Product is going to be same. This is OH. NO2, NO2. What will the name of compound? 2, 4, dinitrophenol. The compound is 2, 4, dinitrophenol. Right? Okay. In third case, the same reaction. If I have to perform, this is the reaction number 2 and this is 1. This third reaction. Suppose I take chlorine 
NO2. See, if you take NO2 at meta position, it will have no effect. So, you have to take at the ortho and para only. Right? Then the reaction will take much more easier. I have to take water and just warm it. No need to boil also. Just warm it. Right? Okay. NO2, NO2, NO2. Ortho position and para position. Water, just need to warm it. I get this product. OH, NO2, NO2, NO2. This is called 246 trinitrophenol. 246 trinitrophenol. Understood, student? Is it clear this one? Now, uh, this 246 trinitrophenol. Uh, one one famous name is there for this and this is called picric acid this is also called as what picric acid this is very uh, famous name for this 246 trinitrophenol clear is it simple okay student now the uh, in the next uh, uh, lecture will be doing uh, the reaction which will be electrophilic substitution this was nucleophilic substitution uh, in heroines uh, more reactions of electrophilic substitution so uh, for, for today we'll stop and in the next lecture we continue with that uh, i think in next lecture we'll complete the chapter also okay so for today's student we stop thanks for watching